I would like to give you a comment on a scene from the very popular Netflix series The Colony uh, from the from one of the episodes and in order to understand this scene uh, you have to know in case you haven't seen the series already that this child is here the son of the parents uh, who you will see uh, his name is Charlie young boy obviously and he has been rescued by the father from being in uh, being away in a different part of the city where he couldn't get home because this is the the setup and the uh, story of that series and there he experienced um, different forms of abuse that are not further specified which are just implicitly referenced to through the storylines we do not know exactly but it uh, definitely changed the boy um, he is uh, different he is emotionally not accessible he doesn't speak about what happened to him and the parents perceive him as very different and changed and that comes um, uh, uh, well that is being um, put in the spotlight in several scenes but this is basically the scene which uh, yeah is the where it's the, the most prominent um version of of this and it is worth making a few comments uh, on this i've reduced the quality of this clip greatly uh, since i do not own the rights of the clip of course and use it here within the very narrow limits of fair use so i have reduced the quality of the clip in order not to uh, infringe anybody's rights and um uh, I'm going to play it and tell you what I think at different points in time. What's he doing? Stop piling food. We gotta get him to open up. Now stockpiling food, interesting. Uh, the I would like to say that basically the writing of um the character of Charlie in the situation, um, is, is, is there, there has been some knowledge and I would assume good intentions behind this in order to depict the, the natural reaction of the child after this extreme experience in some realistic way and form. One example is here the stockpiling food in this other part of town. There was, of course, a, well, not of course, there was a shortage of uh, food. So the behavior of the learned behavior of the child was to whenever he could see anything eatable or usable, he would, you know, gather that and collect it and store it for later. And so this is a learned behavior that uh, which the parents here observe. I'll talk to you. I'll try. I'll try again. And it's what I said, you know, the several times the parents both tried to talk to him and also to get a physical response like a more, uh, you know, emotional response by hugging him. And that never really was, was never really reflected uh, by the boy. Now here we have a, a cut to, you know, the, the, that person is basically watching uh, the house through uh, some hidden cameras and so on, but it's not relevant for what we're discussing here. You hungry? Did you pick this house because of the oranges? That's one of the reasons. How'd you get this house? People who lived here were on vacation when the arrival happened. We're safe here. No, we're not. Yeah, so there's several cues the boys give he, the, the boy gives here. One is the, the oranges, they're a little bit the metaphor for food. Also in the beginning of the whole series, uh, where they represent basically the only thing that, that this family um, could grow themselves in exchange for other uh, valuables and uh, so the boy basically picks up on that and then the question how do you get the house and you know you assume by knowing the 
bigger setup of the plot that houses were usually um, obtained by let's say pushing out the people who already lived there so this is kind of that experience of constant struggle for survival and violence which kind of resonates in these uh, in these questions come on sit with me i want to tell you a story My last tour with the army, I was on a convoy. Got attacked outside of Missoula. Humvee right in front of me got hit by an IED. Our Humvee's had a weak spot, and the IED must have hit it just right. So, obviously, you see that uh, the father here tries to access or you know if that is the right word to connect with his son maybe this is the word um, that might be appropriate here through sharing an own experience so the idea here is that i show emotions or i share something of importance for myself that resonates with me and that would lead to either an emotionally appropriate reaction which is not numb like an empathetic reaction or it would as a maybe next step then open up the other person so that that person can then access their emotions this is an idea which is such a misconception and uh, i'm glad that they i mean they make a few mistakes here which i will you know explain to you later like what are misconceptions but some things are being done right you know let's listen to him first thing i saw was one of my best friends So, so that's an empathetic reaction. Huh? She takes a deep breath and she feels like, oh, here we go. Now here something comes, you know. The, that would be the reaction of somebody who, who has, uh, who is a, capable of empathy. No. I never said anything about anyone. Not even your mom. I just carried it around inside me. So here the patience and the eye contact of the boy is something which would be surprising in reality because that seem it seems to kind of reach him and we have to pay respect to the child actor here i mean it's a great job i mean i'm not um discrediting that but if we take this as a real example i have to say it it would be surprising that the boy even sits with that kind of patience or doesn't maybe even say something else or says oh i don't want to listen can we do can we go can we you know that he doesn't interrupt even the storyteller in this uh, uh that's something that that might even have happened i can still feel it sitting there if that would be real you know that's why we need to talk about what happened to you in santa monica I don't want you to carry it around like I did. I'm not carrying around anything. So, this idea, you have to share it in order for you not to carry it around anymore. I mean, I get it how it helps the story here. And of course, the series or the movie is not intended to be a class on psychological trauma. <laughs> so... <laughs> of course when i say things are depicted in a wrong way i mean it just from the perspective of that you know millions of people watch that and um you cannot take from this that that would be the approach and it's a very frequent myth uh, which i'm addressing in many places so this is just another example of that uh it doesn't work like this and will it will never work what about devin 
to save my life, maybe it was. This is a person who died when they were escaping from this other part of town. It's okay to be sad about her. I am. I mean, he's a great example as a father here, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, saying to your child or your boy, um, hey, uh, you, 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 it's okay to be sad, and like what he just said. I mean, and, and actually showing it in his face. I mean, th that's a great role model. Um, but it will not work when the trauma already happened so massively. People die. Orange. So here are a couple of points. First, there is this surprising moment, basically the punchline of the scene. People die. Um, people die. So what? It happens. I've seen it a lot of times. Uh, life goes on. You know, this is uh, similar to this sentence. You know, life goes on. And um, of course, the father is... Uh, set it back or you know, how would you call it he's um i mean it's admirable how he doesn't uh, you know how he is calm and how he accepts this reply and accepts this reality which he experiences with the boy let's go back a moment here yeah, like he accepts this and then there is this smile of the boy i mean again um, all respect to the to to the to the actors. Um, the smile still is. It's not an empty smile, you know. It's quite quite charming, and his eyes are warm. So, <clears throat> of course, this <laughs> child actor cannot represent fully the emptiness of a smile that would actually happen if that would be real you know i mean it's a nice smile you know there's some sadness to it um, what i'm trying to tell you here is that reality is even rougher reality is even starker in its presentation and we rarely rarely can see that in reenactments it's just impossible it's really impossible. It's okay. So he gets up and... Uh, about oranges. Great. And oranges, he's back in his uh, idea of... You know, it's... it's he, he couldn't reach him in that. So... It... You know... The scene is very close to, um, or how should I say it? You know, if if examples are very close to reality, they might be even more dangerous than ones that are absolutely and clearly recognizable as being not realistic. Uh, this is so well acted and it's so, you know, palpable on an emotional level that you might take that for real and there are as i told you a few things which um, we should be careful about and there's always this implicit um, affirmation of the very dangerous idea that accessing the emotions of the boy is on the one hand possible in the way that it's been tried or advisable because it's not only that it's not possible it's also not advisable if this boy would really be able to connect to that pain that he survived there the parents would not have the tools to handle that defense mechanisms and numbing has a purpose it has a purpose. So that is the take home for you here. It would need a different setting, environment, approach, methods, strategy, and infrastructure in order to deal with that. 
So these are the things that I can tell you about such a scene.